All right, you guys, welcome back to the Life Wide Open podcast. Before we get into the podcast, uh, we do have a word from today's sponsor, Shopify. You guys don't really like when I read it, so uh, I brought up Evan. Evan, if you could just read that for me there. Sign up for a free trial at Shopify.com. No, 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 no. Read, it, read, it, read it normal, in your normal voice. That wasn't normal? No, normal voice. All right. Dude, that was normal. <laughs> I don't know how to change it. Now I feel like it won't be normal. <laughs> Sign up for a free trial at Shopify.com slash wide open. Go to shopify.com slash wide open to start selling online today. Wide open is all one word. That's shopify.com slash wide open. Let's get into the podcast. That wasn't so bad. This might actually be the best invention I have ever seen. Ev- don't say ever, but go on. Ever? <laughs> uh, snowplow, but for your hitch, and you just drive in reverse. And the person doing it right now is in a Ford like Explorer. And they look kind of goofy, but it does. It does. But their driveway isn't super big, and it's actually working. But That's what is the benefit to having it on the rear and then having to drive in reverse? Because Ryan, you, you don't. It's in, it's it's on a Ford uh, Explorer right now. I can't see this car with a front snow plow, so it's like making the best of having. Oh, a it's hitch. a hitch. Yeah. So no oh. like cutting or installing really needed. You just pop it in. That's I crazy, see. actually. Wow, us, us Minnesotan Midwesterners are pumped about that. Man, the future is here, and we just had a snow day. <laughs> you want to know what I'm pumped about? Yeah. Starting a podcast number 58. Not only <laughs> that, but getting an official Jamie cam. Cut to Jamie. Oh, yeah. Wave to the people. Woo! A little thumbs up. Woo! Big Ken's got his own mic, his own camera. Ken. He's now That's a, so fun. officially a part of the podcast. We've been reading you guys' comments, and... Uh, I mean, we've been wanting to do it for a while, but the budget was really tight with all the ads that Ryan was doing. So, <laughs> so they finally paid off. They for finally you guys. paid off. Yeah. Yep. No, we 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 put the money to use and and got a mic and a camera. We finally, read enough Blue Chew ads. Yep. Yep. So speaking of, just <laughs> <laughs> dude, that scared me. Ryan, I'm just, just kidding. You want to know what's crazy? Is the other day I was actually just sitting with Ryan. It was just me and him on the couch watching. Did he tried getting you to take one. Well, he goes like, "Hey," and I'd look. Next thing I know, he's hitting me with an ad. Just yeah, that's what I was thinking. No camera, <laughs> yeah. nothing. Just, just read him right out. to me. I was like, bro, dude, it's just me and you. Like, you don't got to do this right now. You the like, dude's an autopilot. That's so funny. I mean, yeah, I look over. Have you played fishing class yet? And then you're like, no, why? And then just full 60 se- second spiel. Bro, Ryan, um, can, can we be honest here? Yeah. So you keep wearing these shirts. Yeah. And I know you go out of your way. No, you don't think they're funny. That's okay. <laughs> Let me finish. <laughs> okay. I don't understand any of them. Oh, come on. Like the last one, the Illinois, like basically. I have mental just, Illinois. <laughs> that's what it was. Yeah, I never even saw that one. Yeah. Well, oh, wow. Technically, I think you say it's and Illinois, then, but. Can okay, we, so what, what is this? Can we get a read on that? Every single podcast, Ryan wears a different shirt, and each shirt is like kind of a meme shirt or is like supposed to be funny, but. <laughs> supposed to be. <laughs> You, you would download, download a crappy JPEG of a monkey some dork paid $2 million for. Oh, oh it's a hit on uh, like NFTs, NFTs and guy. stuff yeah. like that. But this is the font and setup of like in the early 2000s, mid 2000s, when they were trying to say you wouldn't steal like. It was a pirating DVD. Yeah, it was, pir- it was for pirating DVDs. And it was basically saying like you wouldn't steal a pair of shoes and it was like copy or uh, stealing copywriting copyright infringement is stealing yeah and it was just kind of like the whole thing trying to tell the internet that copyright is a thing which it's everyone theft. took as a total joke yeah it just turned into <laughs> a big like, meme but apparently geez, not big okay. enough for you to understand it i guess i was just too young for it honestly this this one takes it, a it, little bit of thought i have another one down there that's a dog locked in a car and it says i love hot dogs <laughs> that one's pretty spicy. That's pretty easy to understand too. Have you guys ever seen the Spotify show on uh, Netflix? It's like the start of Spotify, uh-uh. basically. Mm-hmm. Well, it shows like basically the whole story of how st- Spotify started and then where they are now. Before Spotify came into the market, it was basically all pirating. Yeah. And uh, this guy was like basically just pirating all of his music and stuff. And he was like, I think there's like a market for this. And then it just shows like for the legal whole, music. Yeah, for well, legal but music. <laughs> A market for like having songs on your phone at all times or access to, I don't know. Do you guys remember having to buy songs for like a dollar 25? Like new ones would be a dollar. Well, they used to be 99 and then they got sent. <laughs> no, it was a dollar 29. Yeah. 29. They went that. But I remember when they added that extra technically 30 cents onto it. 
as a kid, I was like, ah, that hurts. That that's too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's kind of when you like stop. That is too much, and then you, you had to find alternative ways, like lime but wire. You had to resort to stealing. Yeah, no, no, lime wire was long gone. Yeah, it was a little. Really? I used it a bit. Like that was long gone prior to them changing the right, right. rate oh. of buying mm-hmm. a song on Apple Music. But dude. Listening to iTunes or just music in general, and when you had to pay individually for the song, it was like you would really put a lot of thought into it. At least I would. I was like, do I really like this song? Yeah. Will I like this song in a week? Like a year. You you put a lot of thought, and you're like, 99 cents for the song. And now things are different. Debatably, the best they've ever been, the most uh, balanced. With obviously, you, you pay a subscription. Do you think it's more lucrative now? Like the the artists are making more yes. money now. Yeah. I, I don't know. On this. Yeah, I don't know. They have to be because I'm downloading a lot more than ten songs a month, and uh, yeah, like that'd be technically ten dollars back in the day of ninety nine cent songs. They aren't, but no, there's no way they're huh. not making money streaming. Dang. They should be. I mean, they doing, are, but they oh, used yeah, to do CDs prior to that, and that had to have been lucrative. CDs, yeah. <laughs> CDs, records. Before that, Ben, there was records. Yep. They Somewhere had, in between yeah, that, there was like there was tracks tapes. and I tapes. guess with with CD sales, you gotta buy the whole. Yeah. Shebang. It was like otherwise you just had to listen to the radio and and you know you hope for that song to come on. But I mean, realistically, <laughs> I would imagine that you're and they're still probably making a shit ton of money, probably less money a day. Don't quote me because I really don't know, but that's what I would imagine. So back in 1980. Artists were making around like fifteen billion dollars off of the eight track vinyl and cassettes. Wow. It goes through a dip up until about the nineteen nineties when cassette comes in and takes it over and brings it back up. Then C D kind of starts filling this chart. And then Napster peaks it oh, in like yeah. nineteen ninety nine at twenty two point seven billion dollars of revenue. And this is not adjusted for inflation, I don't believe so. Huh. And I, then I, after that, it steeply declines to 2015, where streaming starts to pull a little bit of money back, but they're still not even close to where they were prior. Dude, so I actually had Napster as a kid prior to having iTunes because I didn't have a iPod or a Zoom. So Zoom was Microsoft's version of an iPod. Zoom? Zoom. 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 Zoom, like Zoom. Zoom. Oh, it was a no. Zoom? <laughs> it's Zoom, like Dune with a Z. Okay, well, it was a Zoom. So I, I didn't have one, so I didn't know how to even pronounce it. But uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, I, I'm pretty sure Napster went with Zoom, but you could also use LimeWire, which was like a pretty iconic, illegal downloading website for, for music. Um, it was all free, but it would poison your computer with viruses. <laughs> Napster wouldn't do that, and it was free. So you could listen to the music and download songs to your computer and all this stuff and even music videos for free. But if you wanted to put them onto your Zune or your iPod or whatever the hell you were going to connect it to, then you had to pay like, I think it was 15 bucks a month, okay. which is quite a bit of money back in like the early 2000s. Yeah. like I remember. But it was unlimited. It was unlimited. So as a kid that didn't have either of them, I would go, like I would go skateboard in the morning. Yes. I remember this as a kid. I'd go skateboard out in my driveway and then I would go downstairs and I would hop on the computer and I would watch music videos and listen to music and play RuneScape. <laughs> RuneScape was so lit. That's yep. awesome. Okay. Yeah, How were companies like Napster like operating? They got sued. Okay. So yeah, it that, did catch up to them. So it did. And then I believe that same guy who created Napster uh, teamed up with Mark Zuckerberg on Facebook. Am I really? Wrong? I'm I, not maybe, 100% certain. I, I think they had some kind of run in. Uh, maybe we got to double check that. Ken, is that true? Jane. Kenny, is that, <laughs> Ken just goes, I'm, I'm actually looking at something else. But. Ken, okay. was the guy that created Napster and uh, Mark Zuckerberg, the creator of Facebook, did they no have idea. some? There was an interaction. I thought even in the in the movie on Mark Zuckerberg, they meet, and I thought they did some kind of business together. I'm not the person. Or does he asked. pass up on? <laughs> you it? are the person. You are the well, person you're asked. Jamie, so look it up. He just asked you not to call him Jamie, though. You're, you're Ken. Kenny. <laughs> Uh, so I'll look it up. Then. My mom listens to this podcast, unfortunately, and she's gonna actually probably call me immediately Wait, and freak out. At I this. was gonna tell that story. That's really funny. No, this is a different story. Oh, up until <laughs> Mike, you've November, only been a part of the family for a couple months, buddy. You can't just be hopping on Ryan's no, stories but this is like a, this. This is a, a story about of Ryan. It's been going on for years. It, it's not even a story. Basically, <laughs> I just remember when Ryan was like, uh, "Dude, my I've been like been." 
charging 10 bucks a month to my mom's Napster for, for Napster like, for like three, four, five years. The most recent. It has I, to be a lot more than five years, bro. 1999 or 19, 999 <laughs> a month, every month. And the last one that I have on my phone is, uh, 2020, but I, they've been coming through more than that. Can't figure out how to cancel it. You go on Still? your bill. Oh, yeah. You dude. go on your bill and it's like not there. And then we go, can we cancel this? And then every week or every month we'd get a text. Napster's like on your still phone. Napster. I'm pretty sure the guy was a con artist, Dude, man. some guy probably somewhere has just like picked up that bank Napster. account number and is just getting my 10 bucks a month. You've had that since you were still. in high school. Yeah, like so is it still, still going? Like ringtones. It's still show. going. Uh, no, it, it looks like it ended last year. Damn. Wow. Yeah. Man, I'm, okay. it fell off. When do, you, when do you think you started that? Let's Ooh, just say it, it was going for at least... 10 to 15 years. I would say, like, no, I, I, I mean, probably when ass. I was like 14. So I'd say, yeah, good, like seven years <laughs> oh, okay. of Napster. Right. And I don't remember you, using it yeah, really ever. ever. That's insane. So I still, I mean, they are clearly were getting their monthly rate, but like, I don't get how they, like, that was the peak of paying music artists. Yeah. Like Napster. So Napster I, did pay to people though? I guess they must. That seems sure. like Napster came. That chart looks like Napster came in and then mm. took it all down. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. I think a lot of the artists sued him. Because they were like, you stole our music and gave and it away for free. Or Napster, whatever. this is it. This is in present tense, but Napster pays an average of one point nine cents per stream. Oh, shit, Go figure out what it is now. I bet you that, one point nine now. cent. So that that's what dated, they were making. What? Dated so February artists were making. How, how I don't think Spotify. they were paying them. How, how much is a stream per Spotify? That's what I feel like it's got to be way less uh, than a penny. Uh, yeah, Napster was giving it to them good, dude. <laughs> you know, even if they're paying ten bucks a month. At 1.9 cents a song, how do they still make money? That's but what I'm saying. It. Is like, how does Apple iTunes make money? Because I'm downloading like a hundred songs a month, and I'm paying 7.99. I'm sure it's just like anything. Like you probably lose money on the uh, people that download a bunch, and then you make money on the people. Like the average consumption of music, you're probably not downloading that much music. So you're still like downloading it to your phone. Or it's just Saving worth it. it to keep up with the other brands or, or sites or apps. It and is then you keep people buying iPhones, whatever. But Same yeah. thing about it, dude. If they were paying one cent and think how many streams did like Lil Baby have this year? He had, you know, like 20 billion streams. Do the math on that. That's still what? Like a couple hundred million dollars off of just streaming. Yeah. Or it's their stock price. Like. <laughs> When Spotify picked up Joe Rogan's podcast for a hundred million dollars, oh, their stock price went up. Don't quote me on this, but I think it was like two billion dollars worth, like like their overall worth. Mm. So it maybe it's just that, like where they it's kind of a wash on the actual streaming side of things. I bet they're still making money on the streaming. This this website's actually saying Napster pays the most out of all the platforms. It says they pay. <laughs> they're wow. just working they to, get it back. Back. to They have to get it back. Sixteen dollars and eighty two cents per thousand streams. Uh, Sixteen dollar wow. CPM per That's thousand pretty streams. Damn good. Yeah. Apple yeah. Music pays seven eighty three. Spotify is. We start uploading our videos to Napster. And Napster. YouTube is sixty cents. YouTube wow. is sixty cents. cents per thousand views. I guess. Yeah. Man, dang, that's messed sixteen up. bucks per thousand views. And if you had a song, keep in mind it'd have to blow up on freaking Napster. <laughs> sixteen bucks. Yeah, but what up, guys? Go listen everyone. to this podcast yeah. on Napster. Yeah. <laughs> you just gave Napster a hell of a plug there, yeah. Ryan. You just gave me PTSD. I thought you were going in the ad. I put on my mode. podcast. It or sounded my just like voice. I was like, "What the hell is there an ad placed within my headphones?" Mm -hmm. We're about running up to that point, so let's just run it here. All right, well, I guess this is as good of time as any to interrupt the podcast for a word from today's sponsor, Shopify. That's the sound of another sale on Shopify, the platform trusted by millions of entrepreneurs to create their online store and so much more. Shopify makes it simple to sell to anyone from anywhere, whether you're selling custom tumblers or selling custom car parts. Start selling with Shopify and join the platform simplifying commerce for millions of businesses worldwide. If you've ever visited our website, Seaboys TV, you can see just how much you can customize a website with Shopify. And obviously, none of us have any experience building a website, so it truly is easy. Shopify made it easy to have a fully branded website that's easy to shop on mobile or computer. And thanks to 24-7 support and free on-demand business courses, Shopify is here to help you succeed every step of the way. It's how every minute new sellers around the world make their first sale with Shopify, and you can too. Sign up for a free trial today at shopify.com slash wide open. Go to shopify.com slash wide open to start selling online today. Wide open is all one word. 
That's Shopify.com slash wide open. Thanks, Shopify. Back to the podcast. That's all we got for today. Just podcast from here on out. Ryan starts running ads in our headphones. <laughs> this is just like, I mean, I know we don't really care too much about this, but Megan the Stallion just came out and said that basically that Tory Lane shot at her, which is this happened in like 2020, but it blew my mind. She, he basically like they came home from the club and because Megan the Stallion's a pretty big deal. No, like, no, no. I think. He shot her in her he foot. He shot her foot. There were bullet fragments in her foot. That means oh. there there was there's no bullet holes in her foot. There's a okay. big difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's still bad. Like, it's still <laughs> bad. They got home from the club and like she was like insulting him and wanted him to like open the door up and you know, maybe being a bitch. And then just and then but then he just like you shot know, goes a gun crazy. The door. And, no, and just said dance bitch and shot five times. And yeah, he said dance bitch. Jesus. And then like insane and then he apparently he paid her a million dollars or offered her a million dollars to not say anything i think in the latest drake song he <laughs> says something about meg the stallion like Cap'n. <laughs> what's the know, line exactly drake raps this bitch lie about getting shots <laughs> but she's still a stallion Ooh. <laughs> wow drake is so weird thank you can so awesome but did you see his thing that he bought a, a diamond necklace that has like 42 engagement what? diamonds and it's for the 42 times he wanted to propose? 42 times? Yeah, it seems oddly specific. Just oddly high. He kept track of all that? Yeah, that's what I'm you wondering. You think after 10, you'd be like, yeah, you know, I was felt like I was in love, but it, you know, just... <laughs> and bought different rings every single time? Them. I think he probably just wanted a really expensive necklace. <laughs> yeah, and, and wanted some reasoning behind it. Wanted a good Makes story a so people would talk st- about it. Makes a little bit more sense. Do you guys think Drake is overhyped? Yeah. I, I think that his songs are slightly, at least for my taste in music, they're a little slow and like kind of just too like lovey-dovey and, and just a little bit soft. Like you're trying to get in your feels almost, which I don't really want to do. But I do think that for. he's a legend in the fact that everyone else loves him. And clearly, I think he's like got to be one of the highest earning artists. Have you guys seen Drake's plane? I was yeah. just going to bring that it's up. It's a charter, like full on 747 Boeing. Yeah. yeah. Like commercial seven, plane yeah. for like 300 passengers, probably outfitted in just for him a personal jet. And I was going to bring it up because now he's not, he was the only musical artist to have a plane that size. I'm pretty sure they gave it to but him. Now, yeah. I, I think Boeing right. gave that to him, which at the time I remember when I saw that, I was like, man, why would they do that? But now it, every time Genius. I think of Blake Drake, don't even remember <laughs> his name, Blake. Now, every time I think of Drake, I'm like, man, I know that he's like big deal. But then I think of his plane. I'm like, who else just gets gifted a Boeing 747 that isn't, like, the greatest of all times in the eyes of, like, the masses? Because nobody else has, has that. Nobody else has been gifted something like that. So maybe it's just, like, me conforming to so- the rest of society thinking that way. But I'm like, yeah, no, he is probably a goat because of that. It was a gift from the Canadian Air Cargo Carrier wow. Cargo Jet. It was used. That's so worth like cool. 100 million. It's a 760. They just gave it to him. Yeah, I forgot that what it was a fuck? gift. That's, That's insane. Crazy. Because I was just going to say, DJ Khaled just posted a video of him like plane shopping for basically oh, the yeah. same size plane as Drake. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's now someone else did it. However, he's got to buy that shit. Dude, I, I, I saw that video and I thought to myself, and I'm not even throwing shade, that plane has to cost so much money. So much freaking money. How does he have money to pay for that on top of all the other useless shit he's probably paying for? <laughs> if there's anybody no who's got to him, streaming saying, money, it's got to be DJ Khaled because he's I just guess, like, slap the DJ Khaled on that. Slap the DJ Khaled on that. When I saw that, all I'm saying is I was like, wow. I had no idea these guys were making this type of money. Yeah. Because like that kind of money is ridiculous. To buy the jet, like let's, let's say that that jet is $100 million. It's a fuck ton of money, yeah, but you got to pay to maintain it, store it, fuel it, fly it. You got to have people to fly it. Yeah, like I mean, it's just that would be a nightmare in my opinion. I guess it just goes back to man, these guys got to be making so much right. money where it's so easy to justify it because yeah, it's a headache. But like when they got that much money, it ain't a headache. Why they not got just people rent for it? it. I, I guess I, that's true. I think there is something to be said about like DJ Khaled's probably like. 
I'm the greatest producer of all time. I ain't renting shit. True. I need yeah. myself a hundred million dollar jet. True. Yeah. Dude, so speaking of planes and also renting stuff, like we got hit up by this. I don't know. Just oh, some I dude. Saw this. Yeah, I heard you talking about it too, Ryan. Just some dude that was like, hey, I, I don't know if he owns it or works for it, but this yacht um, chartering company, basically like renting yachts, and went to the page and looked. They have 114 pages of rentable yachts and sailboats. And there's 24 on each page, so they have like almost 3,000 yachts around the world that you can rent. So what do you say to us? Got to get you guys in for seven days, and I mean, I'm sure like we for to- free or we're I paying. Don't know. Probably well, not for free. So okay, <laughs> look at look but, at the the top result. They uh, sort by most expensive to least expensive. This is assuming for seven days. I think they're all kind of just around. What's seven it going to cost? Which I already know. I have no interest at nine hundred and forty-five thousand dollars. So basically, almost a million. Ryan ain't Who's doing paying enough. for that. Right, <laughs> your ads, Ryan, and they ain't paying for a, even one percent of it. So we're not even spending a that? minute on that fucking <laughs> boat. Yeah, 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 exactly. Not but, even a minute. So we can I'm, look at it. Maybe that, that <laughs> one just that one doesn't even look real. Like you look at it, and it, it looks like just it doesn't look real. So this dude just hit us up and was like, "Hey, do you want to?" Basically, pay to. I mean, use no. My service. I can read you the email. It's, pretty, the, it's pretty short lived and boring, but. Go to the 114th page, and then that's probably more what the ones that. Yeah, it's a pontoon. So, of course, <laughs> 21 foot <laughs> pontoon. It's actually not nearly as bad as you'd think, but I went all the way to the last page and then looked for the cheapest one. It's $1,350 for uh, assuming seven days. And it's, it's a dinghy. Thirteen hundred no. bucks Darn for near. seven it's days. A Darn near. It's, it's a up, Lund fishing boat. <laughs> I, it's it's with a ninety up, horse on the back. It's, it's like a two, uh, like a two little bedroom, like little Actually mini yacht. Lit. Yeah, I was like for thirteen hundred fifty bucks. Mini yacht. Hold up. No. Pull up the photo. Pull show. up the photo. A mini yacht. It does all say AKA plus expensive. A pontoon. Oh, so then with the, a fishing so then, house on it. But that's what I was wondering. <laughs> mini so. yacht. It's a house boat on a pontoon. <laughs> Dude, Evan and I had a great idea when we were searching yeah. up house boats. I was this curious. Week. Do we want to? I was just about to actually say this. Do we want to spoil it? Because some people like to steal our ideas. You can't steal it because it's ours. Okay, well, Evan and I were talking about how expensive it Why is. Why are you leaving me out? I was a part of this, too. <laughs> Evan and I and CJ were talking <laughs> okay. about how expensive it is to live around here. Yeah. And Evan said, I should just get, like, a houseboat type of deal, and I could park that out in front of the boys' house. Brilliant. And then live on oh, it. I yes. love that. Genius. And I was I like, yeah. Well, a sandbar. You could move around. It'd be lit. Yeah. It'd be great. And then he brought up a couple stories of ones he'd seen up on bigger lakes, all that. And he goes, you know what? We could... We could build one for here. And then what did you say? You go, well, we could just buy a skid fish house and drag it on, and then you could live in that. And right I was on like, a flat pontoon, on a just flat two pontoon. barrels. And I said, what about one better? You take an RV or like a towable RV, and you back it onto the pontoon, <laughs> and you build a little deck around it. So then, from the water, you got a houseboat, right? This is brilliant. Yeah, and this then is you brilliant. You I can't <laughs> believe you guys came up with this. You peter on over to the shore. No, no offense. <laughs> you peter on over to the shore, and then you put it up, back the truck down, hook up, go out into the woods for the weekend. <laughs> it's Sunday brilliant. comes around, back right on. You're back on the lake. Is that legal? Maybe. Yeah, like what if all you had to do is just register as a pontoon? Yeah, like yeah. Bo- bolt the tires down or like strap the tires to the pontoon. Yeah, it's all it's all part of it. So I guess it sounds my, tippy. Yeah, it does sound a little tippy, but it does sound pretty lit. Being right at the sandbar, <laughs> you're all you mm-hmm. know doing whatever you do there. It, it's you maybe a little sound bit, bar. You're a little bit trashed, and then you're like, I can't go home. I mean, you sleep right there within your own house. No, that or is, you that are is home. We go <laughs> and park it. We go and park it right on the pond on the track. Evan lives on the motocross track on the water. That doesn't sound the three sixty water. That sounds property. pretty lit. We start taxing Evan. <laughs> Do I really think we're going going to put a trailer home on a pontoon and and have Evan live in it. No. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, maybe. Okay. Well, but I what I did wrong. have an idea for was that we should do like a 24 hour yes. or maybe 48 hour God, houseboat yes. challenge. Oh. So we either rent one or we go somewhere that has one. That actually and we go and park bad. that bitch out on the water. Yeah, middle it can't, of it can't, summer. It can't, and it's all of us. And and I'm sure I, one of us will leave because they will be so goddamn mad by the end of 10 hours of it. That actually kind of sounds it, nice. It, it'd be like the <laughs> igloo challenge. It'd be like the igloo challenge, yeah. which no one actually told on that. So I doubt anyone will, but like, to date, that was my one of my least favorite. Actually, no, that was my least favorite video we've ever filmed and made. 
the 24 hour igloo challenge. I think that to do it properly, that kind of idea, you'd have to do it on like straight up the smallest boat possible. Oh yeah, like, yeah. like whatever. Make, make the suck. I want extreme. room to like bring the pinball machine with. Oh, yeah. I, I I don't doubt that for a second. I know that you guys couldn't bear to leave. I that think it would behind. be awesome. It, oh, how about we don't yeah, try to it make it this be, big it would, suffering thing? How about we just go out and have a good time? But then it's like, what what do we put the time limit at? Is it like forty eight hours? If, shit! If, if we're having good trip. time, why do you gotta leave? If we're on a <laughs> super, the we're video. having fun. Why are you leaving? <laughs> Our girlfriends are like. The video yeah. was over four <laughs> days ago. Like we're just, yeah, we're really out. just trying to challenge ourselves. Right. We're tubing if, if, <laughs> behind it. Yeah, if it had like, you know, if it was like a yacht and has jet skis hanging off the side and shit, like, I mean, I, that would okay, be considered this, leaving. I, I'm not going to lie, man. This thing is going to be far from a yacht. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Far from a yacht. If nope. we have a small window air for air conditioner, we're going to be living very large. Okay. The, the video is titled like surviving 72 hours on a boat and then the boat is like freaking it's got jet skis strapped to it and it's got like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. a full live-in bar and yeah, bedroom like it's a like full a full staff yeah <laughs> like, oh this is terrible i want to get off uh, <laughs> counting down the time you want, you want to know something ben you said that the 24 hours in the igloo was the worst video yeah. that we filmed to date for one i thought that was a lot of fun and for two you want to know I, I mean this is a pretty bold statement because i'd really have to look through the probably 400 videos i don't even know where we're at but this R6 quad swap that we're currently working on that we weren't even able to drop this week because it everything has been such a headache. That is, this is actually my least favorite video as of right now. I know we're probably a third through it. Is my least favorite video we've made. I was and about to say the, the same part. thing, bro. The I've been Banshee not and having fun. Are the worst two videos not that I think we've ever all. made in our YouTube career. It's not our worst Wait, video. No, worst time, time making. I'd say worst what time making. Worst, worst time, time making. There, it's gonna be a legendary video when it's done. 100%. But it's like we've just spent so much time. You know, we're all kind of sitting around trying to figure out like how to oh how do we make this work, whatever. And it's just so much time to ultimately be cut down into probably like we we spent five days filming so far and we probably have four minutes of a video just due to like the, the slow process it. of building this thing and it has been extremely boring i told alex she she asked me how my day was i said it was boring <laughs> she asked me how my day was again the next day i said it was boring she asked me how it was i said boring and mm -hmm. honestly i have not had a boring day in a very very i don't even i don't know if i have had a boring day in six seven years yeah like straight up yeah yeah, yeah. no i I know what you're saying. When I think back to filming that video, just like the different emotions that I got from it weren't like I'm bored or um, like this sucks. Like I was anxious and I'm not an anxious person. Very rarely do I like tweak on something. But the fact of like being underneath that much snow and like on the lake <laughs> and uh the <laughs> on ice was a nice new yeah, twist. Yeah. But there was just like parts to it where it was like evoking new emotions out of myself that I didn't even know existed. Right. And I was like, I just want this to be over. I, I'm like thinking of the worst possible options and like I'm in such a negative headspace. You were. I was just like, and I hate, I hate being like that person or having that like mentality on something. I was just like, I just need to like start over. This is just not good. I need to get out of this place. And we couldn't. Mm -hmm. And that's like. Well, you could have laughed. I could have. I could have. But like that wouldn't have been good. And, and the car would have got wrapped pink. Right. And it still did. Which, <laughs> which is ridiculous. <laughs> still so stupid. But dude, I have so much respect for creators that do these challenges for like 48 hours or 50 hours just to like meet the title and thumbnail to like make it look good most of them aren't like life risking though like i will say but i if I, things I, did I go honestly, wrong in the felt, igloo I it would have been bad i felt like that igloo challenge was like kind of like life risking that was but most other youtubers don't have life life risking challenges right and the whole time i just thought this is not worth it and it's a waste of our like waste of our time but mostly like i hate that we're even risking this because like the igloo could have collapsed pretty much at any given point and it would have been bad it would have been really bad but it didn't you're right it didn't and the last it stayed up for another week or two even yeah. we even we drove, yeah, a, drove razor, a fucking razor a on top. afterwards <laughs> afterwards we knew that but like in the time i was like 
this is so stupid. Like, just for, like, a short-term gain. I don't know. That's just kind of, like, my mentality in the moment. So that's why I look back at it and think, like, the suck wasn't worth it. I, I can respect your mentality of uh, not looking for a short-term gain because I'm the same way. I'm all about just, it, like, this this uh, YouTube game or whatever else kind of career you're doing is a marathon, not a sprint. And I feel that and I think about that every day when we're planning and just navigating our path. But I didn't feel that way in that moment. Yeah, I was thinking, like, if this shit fell right now, it would be really bad. But I felt pretty comfortable in there. And, uh, like it was a little scary and I was cold, but for the most part it was exhilarating and I liked the camaraderie of it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I thought it was really fun. I honestly had a good time. I would do it again, but I just know there's really no point in doing it again because it's like, we can't make a video doing it again <clears throat> and do it better because Thank that was like top of the line. We had a fucking Nintendo switch, a keg, <laughs> we Yo had a bar, food. we had steak. We like, it was pretty awesome. It Yaza. was legendary, man. It was legendary. It was such a fun time. But that's why opinion. I like, and it was all built by us. Yeah. That was sick too. That's why I love the True. idea you just had with the, the houseboat thing it's because different. it's like, we can't do the Same igloo thing. again. Like we could make it bigger and better and stronger, but it's like, what's the transition. And I love that. So how do you feel about instead of being freezing, being very very hot <laughs> <laughs> i can deal with that and mosquitoes mosquitoes big bugs and possibly the boat sinking, sinking. i can always put on a life jacket ben, you have a life jacket for like 48 hours i would dude some of those things honestly like some things that we do actually kind of tweak me out where like i reflect back on it, i'm like man i was pretty tweaked out on that thank god <laughs> nothing went wrong but like I tried to play it cool, and then afterwards, I was like, oh, thank God. Yeah. I Dude, we, we've talked about that before where it's like certain things trip Ryan out that don't mm -hmm. trip you out. Certain things don't trip Evan out that trip me out. And and just like it's so funny because we always go, Dude, are you seriously tripping out about this right now, and you do this? You're tripping yeah. about this, and you do that? No, I'd agree with that. I think it's how much time I have to like really think about it. <laughs> I feel like the amount of time that you're immersed in the stress is what gets to you. You can deal with like the little bursts of it, but if it's just like a constant looming yeah. thing, then that's when like being stuck in an igloo, stuff like that. That's yeah. what it gets to you. Yeah. I'd Evans is really that. random. He'll like Evans, drive yeah. a spiked R6, a hundred miles an hour, lay the thing down, rev limit, do a wheelie. But like if the gas tank doesn't have the right thread bolt in it, he's like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> he does his little... Throw them up. <laughs> yeah. Throw them up. But it's just, that's that's the way it goes. I have things that it, stress me out for no reason. And I, to go back on that, would say that making these videos has been the worst for me because I get stressed about, one, not feeling like we're all us utilizing our time, and two, being worried that it's not going to get done, and then three, that when it gets done, it's not going to work. And all those things add up to me and then come out in a negative way. I'd say very well said. It's like those emotions come out when you have to worry about, okay, the time frame of it getting done. And then like when you're Everybody looking on your feels phone, the same way. kind of like yeah. you're Googling shit, but then you like, I don't even End know. Up on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's like, no, actually it's like that yeah. happens, but also like, and then maybe there's too many hands in the kitchen at the time and, and you're just like sitting there staring at it and nothing's getting solved. Yep. That is where that like, just, just gets like, gets y'all worked. It gets yeah. me all worked up. Yeah. It's so stressful. Dude, when we have off time, though, man, I'd love just doing nothing. Like, just chilling. Which is nice like to being see okay you come around, it. too, because there was many years I remember we would not, like, if we were just chilling, like, maybe a year and a half ago, you would, like, stress out. You'd be like, we should be doing something. There's something we could be doing. And I'm like, dude, it's okay. Just to be fair, we should have been doing something. <laughs> Probably. <you're, laughs> we should have been doing something. But you can't always do something. But on, like, a Sunday when... Me and Greta are just chilling, and she's like, let's do this, let's do this, let's do that. Let's go for a walk, or like, uh, go and work out. I'm like, no! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! No, I've been doing things. No! I don't want to do that. I don't want to do any of that. I want to I want to chill. Ah, shit, I, now that you said that, I think I'm the opposite, it's like, still. Really? Yeah. You've like, always just had a wild yeah, amount like, of energy. Like a, like on a Sunday, I'm like, yo, what can we do? What, what, is there something to do? There's got to be something to do. But I still like to chill. See, you are a ball of energy, Mike. You're up early in the morning. <laughs> One of those were going lies. At it. Two of those might have been lies. <laughs> no, I feel the, the same way, Ben, with the laundry, and I feel so bad because, like, I'll get home from a day here, 
and I've spent all day talking with you guys, my best friends, love it. It's great. But I spent all day talking and doing things, you know, being in the car, driving, being outside. I'm like active and socially active. And then I get home and I'm like, I cannot wait to just watch TV and just, just unwind a little bit. But she's been cooped up working at home all day. The only social interaction she gets is with like her coworkers on Zoom. And then I'm just like, she's like, hey, how was your day? And I ask all these questions and I'm just like completely burnt out. And I feel really bad. I feel like that's a hard thing for people who live different lifestyles, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think both sides are very relatable. It's just like a tough balance. Yeah, totally switching things up. We've been thinking about going into the new year and changing things up around uh, the, the podcast studio here, like doing something different either with the desk or completely getting rid of the desk. We're thinking about just going with couches, just like kind of making the environment, the podcast studio, more just chill. like a little bit more chill. Yeah. A little bit like more open and free, less like desky and mm-hmm. yeah. like set up, but also more spread out where Evan's sitting on the couch right now, which you guys can't see if you're watching on YouTube, he would be on camera in a sense. Oh, we are It'd be that like thing. very, I, I, I kind of like the spread outness, but obviously we haven't made our mind up yet, but we are going to be changing the set. I don't know what we're going to do with this sweet, like, table that we had made. It's really cool, but we definitely got our use worth. But uh, 57 podcast, 58. I wouldn't be mad about sitting on a couch while talking to you guys. This is great, but if I can, <laughs> like, lean back. Yeah, I think the thing about the podcast table is it is nice, but it does feel like a little, I don't want to say formal, but if it's in more of, like, a relaxed yeah. setting, like it might be a little bit more, like, flowing and easygoing almost and like less Im- yeah. intimidating if we have like guests Guest or on. or like our yeah. friends just sit down just because like being up in minnesota as you guys have seen like there's there's very few guests that we can have on here just because like the lack of people that come on but we're like we have so many friends that have like interesting stories or just honestly right. shoot the shit with us or funny that we're like dude you should come on our podcast and let's just have a good time and like chop it up and then they sit down and it's like feels formal. Yeah. Like it, right. it feels you got the lights, you got the cameras, and uh it, it it's harder to have a conversation versus just sitting on the couch or sitting down mm-hmm. in the shop just shooting More the chill. shit. It's so we're like, trying to think of like how do we, you know, continue to make these programs but bring on just like our friends to just have conversations with. Yeah, it's just like what we were so before this, we were sitting down eating and <laughs> me, Ben, Evan and our boy, Fast, was downstairs, and we were having this this really funny, awesome conversation. We're like, "Damn, this would have been great on the podcast," but like, you don't ever get into some. Sometimes you don't get into those. Either way, we need more cameras around the room. You know, like, what do you think, Jamie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, can't even oh, be mad at the guy. Yeah. Can't even be mad at the guy. Jamie, snipe. Let's I go. got a couple more months of, or weeks of exclusivity. Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> you actually didn't even, can't have I didn't even light. realize that. I think technically online, I am supposed to be just wow. drinking Coors. Well, good for you. Yo, I got Yo, you so drink bad. Coors you every day. I do. The only thing you drink is Coors. You don't drink water, milk, <laughs> pop, nothing. Mm-hmm. Just My Coors. favorite, I, I, small call out here is because it just cracked me up. When you reach into the fridge, you grabbed a Mountain Dew, then you kept <laughs> the, the door open with your forearm, grabbed a Coors, looked at them both. Put the Mountain Dew back. <laughs> Decided, like, well, it's time. They both look good. You know, want to know the actual thing that was going on in my head is uh, I recently started drinking uh, Apple Crown and Mountain Dews. And I was like, I'm going to mix Jeez. up an Apple Crown and Mountain Dew. And then I was like, ah, that might be a little extreme for right now. So then I grabbed a beer instead. It's darn good. It's a lot of sugar. It is a lot of sugar. You know, it is funny, though. I will say, uh, with going back to the podcast... The amount of people that listen to it that are actually like, you know, associates of us. Or I was going to say real acquaintances, people. Um, is alarming. <laughs> like I'll go places and now they'll be like, yeah, like, you know, your guys' issue with the mechanic. Like, and did you ever get that solved? Know. I'm like, uh, did, did I tell you about this? <laughs> did you and all? like, well, you know, on the last podcast, I'm like, you listen to the podcast? And they're like, yeah, yeah, I listen to everyone. I'm like, oh my, okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. Oh my. I got to straighten up on there. <laughs> I just the same thing. So the other day, uh, Greta's brother got 
held at gunpoint and robbed in the cities. What? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, dude. On uh, the U of M campus. Oh, her wow. little brother. That is not cool. No. I was hoping you were going to say like in Mexico or something like. No, dude. In Minneapolis. <laughs> Are guns less scary in Mexico? Is gone to no, shit. but it's a lot more likely to happen. In, I don't know. Maybe not. No. Anyway. Yeah, he was walking into his frat house, just like literally behind the house. It was the other frat, wasn't it? <laughs> no. Oh. No. And uh, yeah. Just some, frat some, violence. Some, some guy was like, I, I hope I'm not like out in Omer. Like, like they're upset that I'm like telling the story. I just think it's like crazy and, and it kind of oh, just shows wow. like where everything has kind of gone to shit. But especially, you know, close to us, it didn't feel like Minnesota would like be like this but yeah he uh was like walking to his frat house and this guy put down his window and was like come here and you know what do, what do you do when you're in an alley it was like a short like a tiny little alleyway and uh he like goes up to the window and the guy pulls out a gun points it at him and he's like give me your phone or your wallet makes him open up his phone give the code and then go into iCloud and delete his iCloud so that, like the phone is trackable. Oh my gosh! And then he couldn't remember the code, so he like had him tell him like five times and was like, "I'm gonna sell the phone. Like I need to know the code." And then thankfully let him go. Yeah. Who knew that forgetting your iCloud password, which happens every time, would come in handy? So did you not take his phone? No, he took his phone. <laughs> oh. No, he, he took his phone. He took his wallet. Took everything. Oh, I thought he gave it back his phone back to him because he couldn't figure out the code. No, 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 no. The guy couldn't remember uh, his phone code. Oh. So he asked him like five times. What a fucking idiot. You gotta be on top of this type of stuff. You're doing armed robbery in so, an alley? Something tells me the guys doing armed robberies in alleys aren't the smartest guys to remember codes. But anyway. Yeah, isn't that crazy? In, <clears throat> in on campus or just off campus? I mean, yeah, I mean, the frat house is yeah, right on, on campus. campus. Yeah. That is so messed up. Was it like someone his age? Our age? No, he said he was like an older guy. And I guess like the cops have been watching him and there's like video cameras of the incident and everything. But like he was in a unmarked car, didn't have license plate. Oh, no plates. And he's just driving around and now he's like at, you know, at large technically, like yeah. still, he's probably still doing the same shit. So when that happened, me and Greta started looking at like the crime reports in the cities. And dude, that's just like one of 50 things that happened that day. Right. Yeah, probably that hour. So small, I'm sure, in the scale of it, which is not to even try to minimize it, but that's crazy. Like, that's got to be pretty scarring, obviously, yeah, for him. Having a gun pointed at you, you don't know, yeah. if, you're gonna, you don't know if the guy's going to pull the trigger. Right. And, and thank God he didn't, obviously. I yeah, guess that it's definitely going to make him more careful. I mean, I'm not saying of like, what? You should, of walking? walking? That's a, no, but I'm just saying, like, I don't think it's, <laughs> it's a... It's just your living, like, situation. Yeah, like, no, it's, it's the just, worst, dude, but I'm just like... It, if that's what it's going to be in Minneapolis, then that's what it's going to be. And I'm just like, hopefully he's got his guard up. I don't want that to, him to ever even walk over to a car that says, come here. I love how Mike just told you. I love how Mike just told Hopefully he learned his lesson when no, Mike hasn't no, fucking no, a guy, A guy puts down his window, he points a gun at you and says, come here. What are you going to do? Run away? Well, I, Mike would have been that's stressed. That's his fault for not next, being out after dark and wearing those type of clothes. No, it was at 1.30 in the afternoon. Yeah, he shouldn't have been wearing those type wow. of clothes, you yeah, know? It was, it was in the middle of the afternoon. Jesus. Wow, that's actually pretty I'm crazy. not saying he, he learned his lesson. I'm just like, damn, I bet he's going to be careful walking around now. Like not not even like just what do you what do you mean like he's not roaming like, around without his peace or his boys right <laughs> like what do you that. mean careful it's it's like where you live I feel right like. he's so he's got to be careful how could how what would he have done differently I'm not saying he should have done anything differently <laughs> just <laughs> dropped out <laughs> see not, that's yeah, what happened when you go to college so I'm just kidding no I'm you kidding. I I I'm not saying he should have done anything is differently. what you're saying is like being aware of your surroundings. Yeah, More? just, just being or aware what? that the chances of that happening are extremely higher than when he comes home to DL, when he comes home. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. that's what, it's just like a completely different but like it actually, living situation. Oh, shit, that actually happened to me. I've heard this happening to people in Minneapolis, like, Bro, all the time. That happened what, to me. What's like, super annoying, I've talked to certain people that live in the cities that completely deny the living situations being dangerous. And I don't that's understand it. What do they live in Minnetonka? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why. Well, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. The nicest <laughs> city. No, I think it's people that live outside that don't want to recognize what's happening in in, in the yeah. city almost. Or I think 
which is even more like delusional or worse, is that it's like a political stance where you don't want to admit that it is dangerous or that like things are happening because it looks bad on your politician that yeah. you support. Mm. I'd agree Wh- with which that. I, which I'm like, dude, at what point is it just not worth it? Like yeah. put politics aside, put pride the safety, aside. the pride aside, like the safety of civilians, random civilians in a town just because of like a certain policy. Right. I, dude, I agree a hundred percent. Political agenda. I don't know. It's, it's like it's they don't like, care about the integrity of their beloved city, you know? They're just you, like letting it go. Do you remember, well, Ryan? I don't, I don't think they view it like that, though. They don't. That's I, not, yeah. Well, obviously. Yeah. And, I mean, look at politics from either side, and they'll They're both argue. Up. Yeah, they'll both argue against each other, and I don't think either are probably right. But um, almost putting a sense of, like, humanity aside and trying to make it something political when it shouldn't be that. No human should be put in that position. Like, dude, yeah. Can you imagine being held at gunpoint? Was yeah. he Robbed pretty down. jarred from it? Was he pretty shooken up? Well, I think. Or he's, how's, he, how's he taking it? I mean, having someone point a gun at you and not knowing whether they're going to pull the trigger or not has got to be pretty. It was pretty scary. You know, when it happened to me, jarring. Yeah, I guess oh, like right. unlike a, all yeah, of us. So, so and I was they, in a car. Oh my, well, yeah. No, you didn't. They didn't really happen <laughs> yeah. like that. So but. I guess. Like, oh, so him getting a, <laughs> a gun pointed at him was different than just mine. Yeah, Ryan, it. you're being a little bitch. What are you <laughs> ta- oh, no, what, Are you talking about in your Jeep? <laughs> yeah, he didn't have a gun in his hand. Yeah. Yes, he had a gun. Did and he I win? Oh, yeah. the guy he? pointed what? a gun at him. The fuck is this too stupid? Are you on camera? No, he did. He did. I blacked out, but he didn't point at you. He pointed at us, and I said, no, he he's did. not going to pull no, the trigger. I know he won't. No, he didn't like, lift he it up. It. Jesus Christ. Did anyway, I, it doesn't matter. It, no, it does. It does. Did he lift it up? No. Yeah, I was waving he was around fucking like pointed like at us. Was he? I don't yeah. think he, was, I was I don't like, think he, he ever ain't going like to shoot. No, he did. No, he didn't. I don't think no, he ever he went like this. Okay, next time when you tell the story and you go, Ryan had a gun pulled on him. The guy was this close to his head, and, and then I have to go, oh, no, remember? He didn't even have a gun in his hand. <laughs> was Ben in the same car as everyone else? Yeah, I don't he was know. in the back seat. He couldn't see. That's why he wasn't freaking out. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway. <laughs> so I do have something to say about the cities. This reminds me of a story that actually Ryan and I experienced together. It was last year, last fall, and him and I and our girlfriends went to a Vikings game. And we were staying in a nice hotel um, just across the street from the stadium. And we go walking out on game day. We're sitting there waiting for like our Uber or something. Or we were going to go get brunch. Doesn't yeah. matter. And this guy comes up that was supposedly homeless. And uh, he goes like, you know, hey, could I get some money? Like, I'm trying to trying to get back home to see my my mama. And he was like, God, he had to be in his fifties. And like, I don't know. I, I'm actually kind of a sucker. I give. I normally give people money, but it just didn't feel right. He got to me last, and I just was like thinking to myself, I'm like, God damn it! Like, I can't keep just doing this. And I just said, Sorry, man. All I got is my card. And he literally looked at me like this. He goes. <laughs> motherfucking white Whoa. Whoa. Oh, starts, I just started screaming freaking out Whoa. motherfucking white it's like I don't start, know if you can say that word take, anymore you have to take that that word out beep it like it it, it, it was actually, actually it was I actually haven't aggressive. I haven't heard that word in a long time and he starts calling us it and uh like creates a whole scene and we're all just like this and he just like goes walking away and we're just like he was so nice and polite asking for the money and he switched like this Big and I was time. like bro I went from being like, God, I feel so bad telling this guy, like, no, I don't have any cash on me. To like, almost to like swinging. fuck that guy. I'd imagine that even bigger <laughs> cities are, you know, dealing with the same thing. But it's like, how do you even fix that? How do you fix that? You can't yeah. give money out to people because then you create another problem. It's yeah. just like, ultimately, it's just a societal thing. Where does Minneapolis rank in like the most violent cities? Yeah. Danger, dangerous, Honestly, maybe. God, I'd have to admit it's probably not even cracking the top fifteen. I would imagine not, but it, it just really not has as high as shit. you think. But really, I think yeah. it is. Uh, I think like number one, Detroit, Baltimore, St. Oh, Louis, yeah. which I've actually heard St. Louis is really bad. Memphis, bunch of random Milwaukee. That's Dang, I yeah. Have wow, you ever really? heard about the Kia yeah. boys? Uh, Minneapolis. I haven't is, heard about him. He was part that? of them for. Well, now nah, we don't want to spill the beans. <laughs> but uh, you guys ever heard about the Kia boys? Uh. Uh-uh. So it's basically this group of young men um, in Milwaukee 
They're like Wisconsin. They, Wisconsin. I don't even know if I could say young men. They are boys, like young teenagers, and they figured out for some reason how to steal Kias very easily. And they steal these Kias. I was wondering how they got their name. Yeah, the Kia boys. They're they're the Kia boys. We're the C boys. They're, they're the, the Kia, Kia boys. boys. <laughs> Don't and get them mixed up. Don't get they're the twisted. Kia, like we're the C boys because we're the boys of Cormorant. They're the Kia boys because they steal Kias and drive them recklessly, wreck them, roll them, go like a hundred mile an hour kind of fun. through like a twenty five mile an hour like residential zone. They are so reckless and they have no care in the world. And uh, this YouTuber Tommy G actually did a little segment. He did a video with him. I'll he have to went, check that out. He does like these documentaries where he goes to the hood. He's a really I, I actually yeah, fuck he, with I've him. I've seen a few of his. He, other he's ones up kid. and coming. He did a video. So he, anyways, he goes to Milwaukee and he does this video with them. They like fucking start ripping these cars. How do, how do you do a video with them? Aren't they so like, like his channel? Masks or? Yeah, they were wearing masks. Okay, they had ski masks on, like the kids. Yeah, and uh, you just would have to go check it out. But uh, he does these. He started doing these documentary type of videos, fifteen minute videos, where he'll go and be with the Kia boys who are stealing Kias, or he'll go and hang around um, like a a really big drug dealer and like film drug deals, and everyone's masked up, and like it's it's like a show you would see on um, Vice, like Vice, yeah, yeah, where like and he's he does a really good job because it just is very real. How does he get that shit approved with like a drug dealer? I. And that's, all- I don't know. I think you eventually develop a reputation. Like he keeps it real. Yeah. And, and ultimately a lot of these people, you know, you've never been on camera. You, you're into money and making money or whatever. A lot of people want to be Probably like a, a star, fame. you know, they feel cool. Whether their face is masked or whatever. It's just like, I guess I can it understand hit, that. It hits them there. But anyways, he did this video on, uh, I believe it was in New York and the dirt bikes, that are running the streets around there. And the guy who was his main form of contact clearly watches our videos because he was wearing a C-Boys TV dirt bike shirt. No way. Dead ass serious. Dead ass serious. The guy that he meets up with and then brings him to go meet with all the other guys that are doing wheelies in the street is wearing a C-Boys TV dirt bike shirt. Not I shit. swear to God. That's so sick. Bro, I That's and I've dope. been watching his videos for like two months, and then that pops, I'm like... Like, <laughs> that's pretty cool, but also, I don't know. Pop it up. I will send you the link, Ryan. You can put it on the screen. Dude is wearing a dirt bike shirt. That Whoever that guy is. Yeah, that his na- yeah, his name is I don't know. Bike uh, star. Can I've we really that. plug him? Can we plug him? Is he going to get in trouble? I don't know. He's trying to. I don't yeah, whatever. We'll plug yeah. him. Fuck it. Yeah, nice that's guy. Cool. And he's like, yeah, I had to cop that. He copped the quad one, let's, too. Let's he send rides him some ball. more shit. Let's send him some shit after this just because he was wearing it in that video. And uh, that's so know. cool. I'm yeah, gonna actually hit up Tommy G and, and say, "Yo, love what you're doing." Oh, also, that'd be sick. Yeah, do you guys like watch like on that similar form of content? Like, real media right now is definitely on YouTube. I would say not the news. And uh, Andrew Callahan, like all gas no breaks. He he actually got like a, a company bought that whole channel from him, and he lost it. So yeah, he can't why, do. Why did that happen? Basically, he was like just trying to make it, and they came to him and said, "We'll fund all of this. We'll pay for you and a filmer, maybe two filmers, and we'll get you an RV, and we'll pay for your gas." And I think that's about it, you know. Like fronted him, I don't know, twenty thousand dollars to get going and to film for the year, and then like something I can't. I they can't screwed remember. him over in the contract. Yeah, it sounds like. And then he basically had to like give up his all gas no breaks channel, which is just a fun name. That's so. Right. This now, shit happens. A All lot, the time yeah. in contracts. If you don't have someone reading your contracts or if you're not reading them yourself, you're fucking up. Yeah. Straight up. Crazy. So How many stories have you heard of that? He's like uh, just Channel 5 with Andrew Callahan. And like, dude, he he did like a full documentary on O Block, like in Chicago. Yeah. He did. Dude, like Tommy G did one as well. It's What's like O Block? O Block is like a, a big community of apart, like apartments and there's like it's like root section eight housing, you know, like it's very it, dangerous. And it's just mm-hmm. dangerous. That's where like Chief Keith came from, and like mm-hmm. it, it's just dangerous in general. Like there's like li- this building is like against this building, it's not quite like that, but like dude, people like they're shooting all over. It. And he like went, and then he took them to uh, a Cubs baseball game and all that. Like he just does the media. He covers the cool. stuff that like no one's covering. Like going in there with like legit gang members. Wow. It's a little it's, bit ingenious. Like it's not only going and documenting, but then taking them to like a normal yeah. societal yeah. event. That's but, some shit we do. Like he just goes to uh like all the rallies and protests and 
and and he never says anything bad about anyone, about any side, about any certain this or that. But he just ends up clowning like basically everyone he interviews. Like it's not his main goal, but it's like it's very funny. I feel like you could do that, Mike. I would love it. I he's but I'm not outgoing enough. Like I feel outgoing, but like I'm not quick and witty. Say, and he's like he uh, no, I guess you're right. He he's, doesn't really come. He's off pretty as quiet. Like an but, outgoing. Yeah, I just love it. It's very entertaining content. I have a lot of respect for people that are able to go into situations that are going to be uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, and especially for like the cameraman too. You know, it's like kind of one of those those behind the scenes things that do not get the respect that they deserve because it's so awkward when they look at you and they're like, you're fucking filming me. Yeah, Yeah. you're the one I have the problem with. They normally have a problem with the camera guy and you got to sit there and hold that shit on them. And like, if if anyone's getting punched first, it's the camera Camera guy for sure. They'll either whack the camera or hit the cameraman. A lot of times for YouTubers that just are like a single YouTuber with a cameraman, like Danny Duncan's a great example of it. He's probably the biggest example of it. They go around, and if anyone presses the cameraman, they get, they get they pissed, and they, they cover them, and, like, do not touch the cameraman or my camera. It, it's your duty as, and I mean, you know, I don't even know who we're really speaking to, but it, if you're a YouTuber and you are hiring a cameraman, and you're putting, doing these situational vehicle or videos where the cameraman is in a opportunity to get hit it is your duty to make sure they don't like it's i, I remember like protecting when, a goalie yeah i remember yeah, when uh, exactly yeah. logan paul and was was oh, with jake right. Paul, and jake was hanging around the shady character at the time and the guy went after logan paul's cameraman and logan paul grabbed the fucking dude and slammed him to the ground i've seen that happen i've seen so many people like just defend their their camera guys and because they respect them because you without them, it's not. No, I it's, love that. It's, it's love also it. a very selfless duty. It's a selfless duty. You get no fame, and you're just you're in the line of fire. Mm-hmm. And it's like easy to you can do a hundred things right and one wrong. You know, like a hundred things right, delete the one clip you shouldn't have, like bounce the, sh- you know, you oh, fumble the shot. Yeah, but I love that. You. I love. It's also it's just like I love how you said protect the goalie. It's just like the goalie in a sense. You can do a hundred things right, block a hundred shots, but if you miss the three, yeah, oh man, the one that matters. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. so funny. Unless you're a cameraman around here, then you get attacked because you're probably also the one playing the prank. <laughs> like when Ken <laughs> threw that thing at you. Or no, right, you were man. a bystander. No, you were a cameraman. Nah, I, I will admit, I slightly. <laughs> in, I mean, it was kind of my instigation, mm-hmm. but uh, it's, I was. It's different for our situation because we're all friends. Right, right. Yeah, but yeah. I see what you're saying. If you're putting someone in the line of fire. Yeah, yeah, you want to yeah. know something I, I haven't been able to appreciate as much uh, just lately and maybe and it might be just due to my coming of age? Soccer. No. It, <laughs> it's when people go out and they make videos uh, potentially ri- riling up someone just minding their own business. I say they go to Target and mm. this guy is shopping and they're, they're secretly filming them and they very clearly instigate them to get mad and then they make this video on him but it's like this guy's really witty and he's he's quick with the comebacks and it's very obvious that he's joking and the other guy doesn't and they basically make the other person look bad on video and it's very easily for me to like watch it and see and be like they totally just did that guy dirty they set him up and i mean we've maybe done it a couple times too um i think it's considered punching down in the industry it's like when the joke's not on you, you kind of are punching down and, you know, whatever. But I've had a hard time appreciating that lately. Interesting. You know what I'm sure. saying? And yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm not I even going to say, I'm not going to say YouTubers' names that do that, but there's so many that have made such a large career off of it. It's like, I, th- I think maybe I don't appreciate it as much because they're like, I, I know how these people are living. I'm like, wow, dude, like, you're a fucking millionaire and you go around to Walmart and pick on these like people that are just trying to get by, and then you set them up, and then you make it big off of it, and it's just like I don't know. And, and then you I used to, yeah. cut. I used, yeah, you can yeah. edit it and make them look bad, make you look good, and uh, that used to be my favorite type of content. Right. But now I have grown out of it, huh? Because I don't know, I just have a different look on it. I don't, I don't appreciate it as much. I think there's like two truths to that, like both sides. How you said it is considered punching down in the industry because it is. And then there's also the side of some, it's all subjective. Sometimes it's funny. Sometimes it is funny. 
And and like how you said, we've maybe done it a few times because sometimes it happens when we're like out and about. Right. It's maybe especially it's when different like when you're looking up. for it or right. you're out and but they creating come in. a whole career off of it. Completely different. It's because then it's like they're up, they're way up, like they're making yeah. money and they're just always like yep, always another video someone else's of, detriment. Of punching down. Yeah. Like it's different if I'm making fun of you because it's kind of like you know we're in this together kind of yeah, thing, but totally. it's like not really that cool if you're like clowning random people, basically just taking. Yeah. 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 That's a very grown up thing of you to say, but I mean, it's hundred percent. It's legit. something I've recently realized because there's just people that I've watched for a long time that I have a hard time watching. Mm -hmm. And it definitely is changing people on watching on YouTube. It's shifting towards a, I like how you did this prank on people. No one got hurt. No one got upset. Yeah. No one, whatever. To be clear, you mentioned Danny Duncan. It's not, I'm not even talking about Danny Duncan. There's just so many other people that, that do that type of content. Danny Duncan is probably my favorite YouTuber still. I think it's probably the easiest, one of the easiest types of content to it's make. It's not yeah. though, but it, it, it just takes a certain type of person. You have to have right. balls. Yeah. yeah, no, for sure. But like, if you do, if you go up to 25 people, yeah, in, are, in reality, you got the balls yeah. to do it. Odds are that you're going to find one person that's going to give you such a good reaction. You're going to go viral off of it. So it's like, it's just kind of a numbers game. But Dude, there's this guy on Instagram that I have followed and I think he's really funny. And he does a little bit more where he makes fun of himself. And that's kind of why it's a little funnier. Still, it's interacting with random people but he goes to like a Lowe's and he's smoking weed <laughs> and he goes can I smoke this in here and like nobody stops him Same for and at he Home just Depot ends up getting too. wicked high and he like literally is at he's like can someone please kick me out and they're like nah man you're Dude. good to do that in here just totally flipped it on they him they don't want to even press him yeah no. they don't even want to probably get... whatever type of city they live in it's so funny yeah <laughs> they're like we got bigger problems to deal with man people are stealing stuff in here <laughs> yeah they're like we don't need to stop this I'm gonna pull it up speaking of stealing stuff i saw walmart just dropped a stat that they had a billion dollars worth of stuff stolen last year i believe Whoa. it. yeah and and i heard that they were talking about potentially closing down their stores which i thought was major cap yeah yeah major yeah, cap yeah, yeah. certain stores so the dumb question oh I, maybe this feels dumb stores. but is walmart worldwide or just u.s Kind of worldwide. America. worldwide. I don't know about. Yeah, I didn't. I, okay. know. I know it's Europe. America. Oh. But. Not a lot, but there is it not allowed. I think they tried and they kind of closed. A few. <laughs> really? Can you imagine? <laughs> not allowed. God, yeah. uh, but not allowed, yeah. So if lot. it's like worldwide, or but if that's just U.S., like you know, put them. That's a lot of stolen. What What is Walmart's revenue a year? Like, is a billion bucks for Walmart's revenue a lot? Yeah. Though? They said a billion dollars a billion? has been stolen. Was stolen? A billion. Worth of, Dude, there's, there's some cities wow. where uh, they have, like, laws where they don't enforce certain stealing. type of crimes. Where, like, so if it's, a, if it's, like, under a certain dollar amount, they don't enforce it. And I've seen videos of this. It, it'll be, like, this guy comes in here every week and steals whatever. And he's just masked up and, like, no one can stop no one, him. He just what? walks in, takes shit, leaves. Mm. No one does anything. They just turn the other cheek. And the police don't do anything either. Yeah, because they're like, oh, this guy just stole a bag of chips and a pop. And yeah. they, the guy steals, day. you know, whatever. But yeah, he just walks in, walks out. Wow. And I think there's a lot of cities like that. I don't know what exactly it's called. It's like a, it's just like a petty crime. Yeah. yeah, they consider under a certain dollar amount, maybe like a thousand bucks. So they could steal like, wow. I don't, and don't quote me on a thousand, but like a certain amount. And it was like the dude had taken very clearly stolen. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going to happen to him. Um, he does it in, every week. But in fiscal year 2022, they did $572.8 billion. Wow. wow. So how much was stolen? Just a billion? 0.5% of the revenue. That's not no, even a 1%. Actually, yeah, it's, yeah. That's it's like 1% of 1%. Marginal. Sorry, sorry. Not even a full percent. That's, that's very marginal. That's a lot still. That's a ton. Yeah, it's that's a lot a ton of, money, of stuff. But yeah. <laughs> No, I don't. I believe it. We're Have you ever been into a <laughs> billion yeah, dollars? Billion dollars. Never it's even, even a, seen God, that it's ever. Only a billion dollars. <laughs> like it would fill up like an arena of just stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, so the bigger funny. you get, that's just part of it. But uh, I've been like creating a folder on Instagram, like of of crazy videos, but like actually crazy videos. You know, people getting smoked at the like, a bunch of just crazy shit. This too is West got some Coast fucked is, up folder like, of people seen, like, getting hit crazy by cars. Videos? Yeah, I mean, not not it's it's not a folder of oh, people smoke? just getting hit by cars or smoke. He watches every night before he goes to bed. As you will, yeah, I go through all twenty four videos every night. Okay, what 
What's your folder here? <laughs> it's just crazy videos. There and I'm is saying, a lot of explicit. Yeah, things. obviously. Okay, where are you going with this? I'm just wondering if you guys want me to show them to you. <laughs> oh, can we? I feel like this is uh, when you're young and you used to search on YouTube like crazy videos. Remember yes. that, dude? Before there was I a promise you, these YouTube. will not be what you'd find. Crazy but. videos. <laughs> dude, they are. I promise you, if this happened to you, you'd go, that was crazy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Straight into the top floor <laughs> patio door and exploded probably in their living room. <laughs> like, can you imagine that happening to you? Bro. It, 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 like, it could have started the, the entire building on fire to Let an extent. Let alone really hurt someone. Yeah. I don't, I, I hate to be this guy. I don't think it's real. Really? Huh? Yeah, it could be. How do you not think this is real? It's too far away. Yeah, it just it seems like too yeah. real. All right, that seems be. real to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, can you imagine doing that on whatever kind of tractor that is? <laughs> He's just like, yeah, I can finesse, bounce How it back up. How does this only up? have 4,300 <laughs> likes? <laughs> Mike, don't, don't you have a tractor? You have a tractor. I do have a tractor. Oh, you, dude, Mark. You couldn't do that Mark, it, you're but. a farm boy. Mark. 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 <laughs> God damn. Dude, God, absolutely. I love the caption. If your shit tore up, I'm going to stay away. Come on, oh, Mike. Dude, the car meets. <laughs> When you just no, did he just run over his leg? Yeah, and then look at him just like kind of like walk away. All right, I'll restart it. Dude, I Reverse saw this one. Front wheel drive. Oh, oh, hold up. What that guy might have a broken dude, neck. Over. So many people get run over, run over by cars and are fine. Hold up, I know he, he got run over by a Chevy HHR or whatever the fuck that is. I think it's that is. I think yeah, it's he broke his okay. back or his neck. Oh, he's back down. Yeah, he broke his back or his neck. Oh, his face, dude. Do you see the way he bended? Oh, uh, yeah. no, like a collarbone. Yeah, yeah. So he got something. out of there. His collarbone, something. There's so many good ones of these. Dude, oh, oh this, is, this the, is the best yeah. one. <laughs> pants one. Oh, that's the pants one. Pants get pulled. Dude, look, he looks up at the guy, and the guy on the left is filming him right there. And he's like, oh, uh, shit. <laughs> Just his got pants dirty. down. Boxers that, are it, off. It, is that like a southern thing to do these car meetups and donuts? <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Oh. Holy Evan thought that was funny. <laughs> back. Bike in half. <laughs> no. Dude, I was no. just telling Vass to watch out and not do this on our scooter. Oh, right in front of the cop. Oh, <laughs> dude. Oh, he skins. slid on his face. Dude, he had the green light, too. That cop was running a red light. <laughs> You're trying to warn him. Oh, shit. my gosh. Banshee. Go figure. Oh, oh, dude, there's been so Straight many times late at night. We've been, but told. <laughs> told told there's been so many times late at night. We'll be buzzing home down the trail after like a long day snowmobiling in the mountains. And we'll be just ripping like 75 Burning. dark whooped out trail. And there'll just be a corner that comes out of nowhere. And I've almost done that. And I always go. Man, that really, really suck right now. Yeah. Just pile drive into a bunch Freezing. of trees at the end of the day. Yeah, this is a this. I will end on this one. It's a four wheeler clip that most of you should have seen if you're into what, a power sport. But this dude bounces this utility four wheeler. Oh! oh! Wait! Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> does it roll on him? It kind of does, but oh! actually, the dude ends up being all right. So you got to be careful with those those. Those, Actual those, four yeah, wheelers, like you, not quads, you utility really four, four wheelers. Those things roll on you, you're in trouble. I mean, people die all the time. Especially the uh, the it's the going up the hill thing. You can climb oh, something and tip straight or back, or even sideways. Yeah. How do people keep getting hit at these car meets? How do you show up I, I at a they, street? They just keep happening. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> how do how are you so fucking dumb? You're like, I'm gonna stand this, this close, close dude, to, get I, hit. to I this just, random amateur dude who just bought a charger <laughs> last week. <laughs> Literally, dude. Part should, of the thrill. We should do like a PSA, like uh, sh T-shirt or you know some fundraiser. Stop getting hit <laughs> at car meets or whatever. What are yeah, those 100%. called again? Well, the, a PSA slide, street, yeah, street slide, takeovers. Street takeover slideshow. There's I do want to go to one, thing. though. I'm yes. not going to lie. It'd be yeah, so, so fun. Is that, is that like a southern thing? I think it's more of a big city thing. I think it's Because they can get away with it. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I think southern, wherever 
a bunch of dudes have stolen Hellcats. Seems to be a common theme. It is always the Hellcats. You always see a Hellcat doing it. I think always. it's I think it's because you can buy like a seventy thousand or a hundred and seventy thousand mile Hellcat with a salvage title for like thirty five grand. Yeah. So it's That's like true. How can you not? It's also kind of like the gangster car. Mm-hmm. Like if you look at like the the hood wrappers, they're all ripping around in Hellcats. It doesn't matter if it's a Charger. It's mostly a Challenger. Mostly, most of the time, it's a it's a Charger. Yeah, the Charger the or the Four Door. Yeah. It's a Four Door. When yeah. you see somebody That's getting true. smoked yeah. in it's a donut t- ring like that, it's always it's usually a Hellcat ch- Charger. But it's always. like the neighborhood star drug dealer. They all like that's when they feel like they. I don't know. That's it, when you got it when you got that. It kitty. seems yeah. like <laughs> it seems like that's how it is, and it also seems to be. That's how it is because of the way they talk about it in the rap songs. But <laughs> I, I, I'd say we've probably gone long enough today, wouldn't you guys? Yes, sir. We've gone deep enough. It was a good, good chat. One. It was a good one. Yeah, this was fun. Subscribe if you're not already. Drop a like, comment, 150, whatever you want. We're trying to get to 150,000 subscribers. Grinding for it. So no, And we're also trying to hit 2 million subscribers on YouTube for C-Boys TV, so our main channel. And uh, we will see you guys next week. Peace.